Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe video. I'm going to be doing this very quick. You probably can't see out my window here in my apartment, but it is raining, thunder, lightning. I have a fight to catch, so forgive me for the fact that there's not like great lighting and you probably don't hear so well and all that, but it is what it is. There is a normal full Dividend Cafe podcast this week. I recorded earlier this morning. So if you want kind of a the 16, 17 minute version of all I have to say this week, please do check out the podcast. But let me just say a little bit um, here on the video for those of you that prefer this medium. Uh, market has just opened on Thursday morning. There's been a couple days this week that were slightly down and a couple days this week that were slightly up. So it's not been a real impactful week in the market. So far, July is up as we've kind of just kicked off the second uh, half of the year. But earnings season is just starting and really only a very small handful of companies have released so far. Kind of a mixed bag, mostly pretty good results, a couple that may be underwhelmed on an individual level. But on the macro, the earnings scene looks decent. The Fed didn't really have much to do or say this week and the political and, and beltway and macro aspect there didn't have much going on. No, there's probably a lot going on politically, but not that it was market sensitive. So the reality is that I expect the market will mostly move in the next few weeks off of earnings results, which is the way I think it ought to be. I do um, believe there's some really helpful information at DividendCafe.com about the yield curve, about understanding how we got to this place where the three month and the 10 year are inverted. And that inversion has almost gone away. It was about a quarter point inverted and now it's about six or seven basis points inverted over the last couple of weeks and, and yet the two-year and the ten-year never did invert and i think you see this high concentration of uh, yield pickup in the very 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 short end of the curve and then my expectation has has happened each of the last four times the Fed has gone in a rate decrease cycle is that yields actually go higher. The longer maturity yields go higher. They drop in advance or anticipation of the Fed acting and then they end up going higher. Four out of four times the 10-year bond yield has been meaningfully higher eight months later. And I think that's pertinent to the way people think about this. If they trade off of what just got done and reposition bond portfolios, as if the market has not known what's been transpiring, as if the market has not been doing over the last six months what it was sort of pricing in, in anticipation of where we are now, I think they make a very, very big mistake. Really right now, believe that active and even alternative approach to a lot of the, the risk diversifiers, the things people do in their portfolio to make it more defensive, is an advantageous way to go. Putting on more beta in your stock portfolio does not make a lot of sense to me. You've seen uh, today in particular, I won't say the name just to be nice, but one of the very big, huge new tech, cool tech, media streaming companies getting walloped. And you see a lot of the value names so far releasing good results. The beta, the risk exposure to the market, the embedded volatility, um, the leverage in a name, those things matter and our, for our purposes, at this point in the cycle, we prefer to be more defensive in our equity allocation. That does not mean not owning equities. It means owning equities, owning a healthy weighting of them, but being biased on a more defensive side and into non-cyclical names largely. Um, I, I also wanna quickly just sort of put out there that I believe the China trade deal remains the biggest threat to business investment. And I believe business investment remains the big question mark to how much GDP will continue to expand. Um, I do not like the idea that the Fed is trying to get inflation, but I do believe that we need to get growth. I just happen to not believe growth and prosperity are inflationary. And the growth doesn't have to come organically from a return on invested capital, from productivity surge, and that is a question I cannot answer at this time. And I, I believe the China trade deal is a big question mark. We're looking for a lot of economic data in the months ahead. I'm not looking, I wanna make this clear because I talk macro more right now than I think I ever have. I'm not looking for macro data in the third quarter to affect what I do in the third quarter. I'm really not necessarily even looking at it to affect what I do in the fourth quarter. 
the macro picture right now for long-term investors like us is because I'm trying to formulate the right thesis about where I think the economy and the market will be going for a year, two, and three years. And so to the extent that that message can get lost when I'm sitting here talking week by week, I want to make sure that part's very clear. I am sorry that the video is shorter than normal here this week. Please reach out with any questions. Please listen to the Dividend Cafe podcast. There really are great charts and other information at what I think is a very full DividendCafe.com this week. And uh, we will leave it there. Um, have a wonderful weekend and we look forward to coming back to you again next week. Take care.